Hey guys, I'm uh, working on my ZX-10, it's 2006, and uh, I was out here the other day um, checking the valve clearance, because uh, it's that time, and I came across a pretty common problem with these, uh, the older models, which is the valve spring retainers that crack and break apart. Um, so I'll show you what I mean here. If you take off the buckets, you can just use a magnet tool like this. I found that some of these were actually cracked and there were little metal pieces floating around inside the bucket. Uh, it's been like this for a long time. They were all rounded off. Um, but obviously you can't leave it like this. So these needs to get swapped out. Uh, so I'll, I'll explain what I did to get to this point. Um, you have to start by taking off, there's little plastic side panels beside uh, the seat and then the seat comes off and then you can take the tank off. There's a bolt through the back here somewhere uh, and two bolts at the front. The whole tank lifts off. You can disconnect it down here. That's the electrical connection on the left side. Uh, and then there's a fuel connection that needs to come off as well. Um, then from there, the air box can come out. Uh, it has two little rubber plugs that go up through the frame here, which is where the air intake comes in at the front. Um, and once you've got that off, uh, you can take the throttle bodies off. Um, it's kind of difficult to reach, but you can get through these little holes in the side here with a really long Allen. Uh, and that will allow you to loosen the clamps that go around these. Um, and there's a few electrical connections across the top and a few hoses that need to come off as well. But then it really, that's the only thing holding it is those clamps, so it just pulls straight off. Um, from there, uh, I wasn't able to get the valve cover off without taking off the right engine mount. Like I got it loose inside there, but it just, it won't slide forward and it won't slide back and I couldn't really turn it. So um, I had to take off the right motor mount, the upper one. Um, and I don't know if you have to fully take off the radiator or just drop it, um, but it was in the way and I wanted to flush the coolant anyway, so I just uh, I just took everything off. There's a bunch of hoses that go to the reservoir on the left side, um, and the, the cap uh, is over on this side. It has a couple of hoses going to it, and it makes it a lot easier once that's out of the way um, because you do have to at least get your... Uh, if you're going to take the cams off, you have to get the uh, cam chain tensioner out and there's a hose that goes right over top of it. So you're at least going to have to drain and take that hose off. And so once you get inside here, um, you have your two camshafts across the top, the intake and the exhaust. Uh, and the chain goes over the, the sprockets on them on the end. Um, once I decided that they were going to have to come out, even if you're just doing a valve uh, shim adjustment, like swapping out shims, it's gonna, they're going to have to come out. So the best thing to do is to put something around your cam chain um, so that there's no way for it to drop in there. Because if it drops in there, you're going to be in big trouble. Um, you're going to have a lot of fun trying to get it out from down in there without binding it at all. Um, so I did that. And there are a lot of uh, oil passages. Um, there's two at the front here. I don't know if you can really see them there's one right here in the bottom and there's one over here in the bottom and then there's all these um, I don't know what you call them uh, these little alignment dowels um, so you want to make sure you block them off especially once you start have playing with tools and little metal pieces in here because again if they fall down in the engine if something falls in there you're gonna have fun trying to get it out um, and then from the side over here, this is where you uh, turn over the engine. So there's just two little plugs in here. You get them out with a flathead screwdriver. The left one is a, I think it's a called a torque um, bit. It's a size T50. Um, and it's really pretty annoying actually because the bit never feels like it's solidly in there. It always feels like it wants to spin and strip. And I can only imagine how much of a pain that would be if it stripped and you had to fix it. Uh, and then the window on the right, it gives you a view onto the, into the timing of the crankshaft. Um, so there's a little line when cylinders 
number one and number four, the two on the outside are top dead center. There's a little line that goes across that wheel in there and lines up with the grooves that you can see on the left and right side of the hole. Um, so that's how you know you're at top dead center. Um, and then I made this little tool out of a drinking straw. Um, so when I know the, um, the number one cylinder is at top dead center, I put this down and touch the top of the piston and just make a little mark where it um, passes, like where it lines up with the top of this uh, seal here. And that way, when you have to do two and three, um, you can just pop it in there and um, turn over the engine until it lines up uh, over here. And then you know you at the exact same height. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, how I did manage to get these uh, valve spring retainers out. Um, if you can see, there's the little tiny cylinder in the center is actually the end of the uh, valve, the valve stem. Um, and around it, there are two little keepers um, that fit in there um, in a way that when the spring pushes up on the, uh, the spring retainer, which is the, the larger portion of the disc, um, those little keepers get jammed between the spring retainer and the valve stem uh, that holds them all together as long as there's um, pressure. Um, so as long as th nothing happens with that spring and the, the valve spring retainer can't drop down, then the keepers can't come away from the, uh, the valve stem and um, they're stuck underneath it holding everything together. Um, so you can do this, um, like tr the traditional way would be to, to take the whole head off and you get a valve, uh, a valve spring compressor tool um, that squeezes down and holds it, the spring um, compressed so that you can, um, you know, you can easily slide the, the valve spring retainer down and get everything apart. Um, but I really don't want to have to take the head off this engine um, because it means not only are you looking at like putting a new head gasket on and you have to take the whole engine out of the bike um, since it's bolted through um, through the head is part of what's holding it on uh, it just turns this job into a much much bigger job uh, so I did manage to find a way to get these off um, the trick is a 17 millimeter socket uh, if you have two it's even better it just makes it a little bit easier um, but you use this to take the old one off and to put the new one on. Um, so I ordered, these are some of the older ones I've taken off, uh, and I ordered a bunch of replacements. Um, you can get um, the retainers for uh, 2008 and up will fit on a 2006, 2007. Uh, I'm not sure about the years below that, but I'm fairly certain that they fit those as well and uh, I'll take one apart here and show you the uh, the difference okay so that's the old one on the left and the new one on the right um, and you can see they're really they are about the same size but this one on the right is considerably thicker than the old one um, so part of I've heard people say that they must have realized this was happening on a lot of bikes and that's why they changed them to be thicker. Um, but they, they do fit the same. So, uh, you can put these on at 2006, 2007. Okay. And to get the old one off, um, you're going to need the 17 millimeter socket and a pen magnet. Um, this one got pulled apart. Um, you probably will have to sacrifice one to be able to get it through the socket. Um, but you drop this down in there. So it just hangs out inside and then it's helpful as well if you have some sort of tool to give you a bit more uh, grip because you need to you need to push down on this with your hands now so i've got this uh, bicycle wrench that seems to fit pretty well so let's see if i can show this so the magnets in the socket it goes on top there and then I use my tool just so I can get a good uh, amount of grip and push down. And just push it straight down as hard as you can. And you'll probably hear two little clicks. There you go. 
and the keepers get sucked out with the magnet and now you can lift the old retainer right off okay now you can see down in there a little bit because the uh, the cylinder is at top dead center the valve won't really go down that's pretty much as far down as it goes um, you can take the spring out and just pull it back up a tiny little bit that's really all there is okay now here is the uh, the new valve spring retainer um, and of course the, the keepers are still stuck on the magnet it's probably the best place for them um, just to make sure that they don't fall and get lost because these are well you're gonna have to wait if you want to order more and I think they're about five bucks each too so it's best to hold on to them as much as you can and so I'll take the uh, the keepers out and I'll just drop them into the new valve spring retainer um, to get started okay so I've got the keepers down inside there and they will go they'll drop all the way in and they won't uh, they won't fall at the bottom um, so you can just place that on top and then the trickiest part uh, of this for me was to try and get the retainer pushed down far enough that the valve stem pokes up through um, and then get the keepers in while you're holding that spring compressed before finally letting it all go um, so it all seats into place and holds itself together. Um, and I, I probably spent an hour and a half on the first one cursing its wearing and trying different things until I finally found this. So this is the, I actually have a second 17 millimeter socket, uh, but you can get away with one if you, if that's all you have, uh, on a ratchet, um, stuffed with paper towel almost all the way to the end like that. Um, and what you can do with this is push down on the retainer and hold those, um, keepers in place. Um, and then when you take the tension off at the end, it should all seat together nicely and hold itself in there. Um, so I'm going to put it right over the top like this and you want to push down, get it down as far as you can all the way to the bottom and then gently let the pressure back off. And you can see it's sort of holding together now. It's not quite seated all the way. So I'm just going to do the same thing again and it might take a couple tries. And there it is. It's uh, seated in there all the way down. And this is uh, obviously a new one, so it shouldn't have this problem again. Um, and uh, you're ready to put your shims in and your buckets back on and then start building everything back together.